John Hagee Ministries, fulfilling the commandment of taking all the gospel to all the world. On today's telecast, Pastor John Hagee's sermon, Don't Worry. What does God say in His Word about worry? In one sentence, worry is sin. I want you to listen to this next statement and write it down in your memory. Worry means there's something over which you cannot have your own way. And in reality, it's personal distrust and irritation with God. I'm going to say that again. Worry means there's something over which you cannot have your own way. And in reality is personal distrust and irritation with God. Stay tuned for today's sermon, Don't Worry. John Hagee Ministries presents to you the gift of gospel. Bring the gift of faith, hope, and love to everyone in your family. For him, a gift to encourage his faith. For her, a little something to remind her how special she is. For the little ones, something to inspire their adventurous spirit and must have stocking stuffers for everyday life. Find the perfect gift this holiday season. Call or visit us at jhm.org. Behold, the tax man cometh. Like it or not, April 15th comes every year. Just because you can't avoid paying taxes doesn't mean you can't do something to take the sting out. Write, call, or visit our website by December 31st with your tax-deductible gift to John Hagee Ministries and help us continue to spread the gospel to all the world and to every generation. And now, Pastor John Hagee's sermon, Don't Worry. Will you please stand for the reading of the Word of God? Turn with us to the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 25 and following. As we talk today on the theme, Worry-Free Living, we built our first church in San Antonio in 1966 on Nacogdoches Road, and people said, don't build it. Now the interest rates are the highest they've been since the Civil War. I said, well, I wasn't here then, and I'm not concerned now. God still is paving the streets in heaven with gold. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to the Lord. Nothing is impossible to those that believe. I believe, draw the prince, we're going to build the church. We built the church, and it was full when we got it built. When we built the second and the third churches, you could cut the tension with a knife because of the size expanding each time. Each time the church was filled to capacity. When we built this church in 1986 and 87 to seat 5,000 people, there was much ado in the media about such a large church that would never be filled. That virus of fear spread to many of our members. Many asked me, why are you building that church that big? And my answer then and now is this because that's all the money the bankers would give me. That's why. The worry warts were having a Super Bowl. We'll never fill it. Dedication Sunday, October the 4th, 1987. People packed this auditorium to the walls the sheriff walked up that aisle and handed me a note and said, I put a barricade over Stone Oak Parkway. There's a traffic jam for miles up and down this freeway. I almost danced. Almost. <laughs> the message is, don't worry. If God be for you, who can be against you? If the government shuts down, God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you to the ends of the world. If your best friend walks out, God Almighty will walk in. In the midst of the storm, he can still walk across the water and reach you with a comforting word and a supernatural miracle. In the day of your greatest trouble, he is still the Prince of Peace and he's still the God who has the answer. Give him praise in the house of God.
Now, for just a moment of pure honesty, how many of you have a Ph.D. in worry? Let me see your hand. God bless you for your honesty. How many of you worry more than you should? Let me see your hand. How many of you have a hard time telling the truth? Let me see your hand. America represents 6% of the world's population. We take 90% of the tranquilizers. Why? Because we're uptight. We are. We're an uptight generation of people. One lady said, the only thing holding me together is my hairspray. <laughs> Parents worry about the social development of their children. Uh, a father was seeing his small boy eat breakfast rather sloppily, and he said to the boy, I said, son, you're eating like a pig. And recognizing the boy had lived in the city all of his life and never seen a pig, the father said, son, uh, you do know uh, what a pig is, do you not? And the boy said, yes, a pig is a hog's little boy. <laughs> You'll get it tomorrow. <laughs> Mothers worry about their children when they go off to college. A mother whose son was leaving for college wrote a personal letter to the president of the university. Her letter said, Dear Mr. President, my son will soon enroll in your university, and I'm trusting you to watch over him. Make sure that his roommate does not curse, drink, chase women, or is given to any vices. I want you to make sure that the young ladies he dates are pure and wholesome. Mr. President, this is the first time my son has left home except for the four years he spent in the U.S. Marine Corps. I think he's ready for college. <laughs> what does God say in his word about worry? In one sentence, worry is sin. I want you to listen to this next statement and write it down in your memory. Worry means there's something over which you cannot have your own way. And in reality is personal distrust and irritation with God. I'm going to say that again. Worry means there's something over which you cannot have your own way. And in reality is personal distrust and irritation with God. Jesus Christ made the profound statements about worry that the world has ever heard in Matthew, the sixth chapter. You're going to hear this phrase today until it's etched into your brain. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Read with me, Matthew 6, 25 and following. Ready? Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spend. And yet I say to you that even Solomon, all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. If people would practice that, two-thirds of the psychiatrists in town would be out of business. Simple, profound, and very workable. I want you to hear this message today because it will change your life forever. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, from the house of God to the nations of the world, let the light of hope shine that we have a hope that is steadfast and sure Therefore, we do not worry. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask it, and all of God's children said, Praise the Lord. You may be seated.
We are commanded by Jesus Christ, who was the Prince of Peace, not to worry. Five times in Matthew 6, you hear these statements, take no thought, be not anxious, do not worry. This is the owner's manual of the soul. Your creator wrote this. He knows how you function, heart, soul, mind, and body. This owner's manual of the soul said, you, you, and you were constructed by the architect of the ages to have, to, to are made for worry-free living, not to live in an environment of perpetual stress and worry. You were designed to live life without tension, turmoil, and Tylenol. Life without stress and without strife. God designed you that life would be full of joy because you would have power over the world, the flesh, and the devil. The Bible says that God structured the universe for the righteous to have a carefree life, for the life to be happy and for the life to be joyous and to rejoice in the Lord and to rejoice again. The Bible says, casting all of your care upon him for he careth for you. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believed in God, believed in me in my Father's house on many mansions. The Father said that he is almighty. He is all-knowing. He is ever-present. He's always there in the time of trouble. He's there with you now in the crisis you're facing. He is there helping you to climb the impossible mountain. He is going to be able to defeat the giants that are in front of you. The problems that you're already stewing about right now while I'm talking. God has already solved it. You're just not aware of it yet. He's going to make a way where there seems to be no way. Give the Lord praise in the house of God. When you read this book, God our Father is the God of all hope. Jesus the Lord is the Prince of Peace. We have the sword, the shield, and the buckler. The Bible says, call upon me and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not. That's not a statement from the President of the United States who lives in confusion most of the time. That is a statement from God Almighty who has all power in the universe. Jesus constructed a, uh, conducted a stress seminar in Matthew 6. Five times he uses this text, take no thought, be not anxious, don't worry. In the first verse, verse 25, he says, don't worry about life. It's the Greek word suke, which means physical life. Don't worry about your physical life. I manufactured you. I know how you work. I can heal what's broken. Why are you grinding your teeth? I can take care of your problem. Then he says in verse 27, which one of you by worry can add one cubit? One cubit is, and the Bible is 18 inches. Now, if by worry you could be at a cubic, uh, I would. I'd start worrying immediately. That would make me seven foot two. I'd go sign up with the Spurs for $20 million, and I'm on my way. <laughs> then he asked the question, verse 28, why do you worry? Verse 31, do not worry about food and drink. Verse, five, verse 34, do not worry about tomorrow. So the summation is, God says, don't start worrying. If you are worrying, stop worrying because I can take care of everything if I attend, listen, if I attend the funeral of every sparrow that falls from the heavens, are you not more, much more valuable than they are? If I'm watching out for them, why am I not watching out for you? Because God is your father. This is the owner's manual. And he says, I am your provider, I am your healer, I am your defender, I am your rock, I am your high tower, I am your shield, I am your buckler, I am your fortress, I am Jehovah Jireh, your provider, I am Jehovah Shammah, the God who is there, I'll be there when you need me, call, I'll show up with great and mighty things. Give the Lord praise in this house. The President of the United States has a security service with men who shoot guns going before him and behind him. But you, the believer, 
and those watching by television. God has said standing around you is an invisible squadron of angels that go before you and behind you to be your rear guard. You have an angelic escort right now. Angels are filling this place. They've surrounded this property because the righteous are here today worshiping and glorifying the King of kings and the Lord of lords and of his kingdom. There shall be no end, hallelujah, to the Lamb of God. The God that we serve is the shepherd who guides and provides. He leads in paths of righteousness for his namesake. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. Don't worry because the God we serve cannot fail. Don't worry because he can make streams in the desert. A stream in the desert is an impossible thing, but God can do it. Don't worry he can turn your darkest night into the brightest day. Don't worry about your past is forgotten and been forgiven. The blood of Jesus Christ has set you free from the stain of your past sin. Don't worry, God's in control. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God has buried your sin in the sea of forgetfulness never to be remembered against you anymore. One thing God cannot do is remember your sin. Once it has been confessed and washed whiter than snow by the blood of Jesus Christ, God himself said, I will forget it. If God has forgotten it, why don't you? Quit talking about it. Quit telling other people about it. You're as pure as the blood of Jesus Christ and make you. You are somebody special. You have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Don't worry about getting older, it happens. There was a day when your hair was black, now it's gray. You know you're growing older when someone compliments you on your new alligator boots and you're only barefooted. You get older and everything hurts and what doesn't hurt doesn't work. You sit in a rocking chair and you can't get it going. I've got good news. You're going to live forever. You're going to live forever. Fifty million years from now, you're going to be alive and well, shouting on the hills of glory with a perfect body, a disease-free body, singing the songs of Zion, wearing robes of righteousness and crowns of glory, living in a mansion designed by the architect of the ages, walking on the streets of absolute gold. The half is not entered into the minds of men what God had prepared for his own. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You ever notice how worry comes at a bad time? It comes at a time of crisis. Just when you need a clear mind and steady nerves to make a great decision, here comes worry. Like a dark cloud to hide the sun. Like a leech draining you of your creative capacity to think. Worry is a killer. Worry makes cowards out of brave men. Worry fills the face with wrinkles and apprehension. Ladies, that's enough to make you quit worrying right now. <laughs> worry paralyzes the mind so that it cannot produce the better idea to solve the new problem you're facing. It robs your body of rest at night. It was an amazing thing when my cardiologist told me one of the main contributors to heart disease is the inability to sleep well. If the ability to sleep well brings health, my wife has everlasting life right now. <laughs> Worry sends you to work shattered, shaky, second-rate, on the naked edge. 
Medical science is now confirming that worry is the mother of cancer. Worry produces heart disease. Worry produces high blood pressure. Many of you in this room are taking medicine right now because of the power and pressure of worry in your life. Worry creates an ulcerated stomach. It's not what you're eating, it's what's eating you. That's the problem. Worry has sent millions of Bible-believing Christians to the cemetery decades before they were supposed to go because they really didn't believe that Jesus Christ was the Prince of Peace. Jesus said, do not worry, do not worry, take no thought, let not your heart be troubled. Say that with me, let not your heart be troubled. Say it again like you mean it, let not your heart be troubled. This Bible is filled with a God who cannot fail. He will not fail. I am God, he said, and I will never forsake you. I'm from everlasting to everlasting. I have already defeated your enemies. I've already solved the problems that are before you. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Shout for joy. Clap your hands, O you people. Lift your hands and let the Lord of hosts hear the shout of a king in the camp of the righteous. Bless the Lamb of God. I repeat, worry is sin. Worry is sin. I'll go further than that. Worry is practical atheism. Worry proves you don't believe God can take care of you. That's practical atheism. Worry is faith in fear. It's not a compliment to be called a person of great faith. Why? because we serve a God that never fails. It doesn't take great faith to believe in something that never fails. It takes faith to believe in something that fails most of the time, like the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> I'm sure Jerry Jones will be calling tomorrow. Two words in Jesus' ministry, fear not. Fear not the past. Your past is forgotten and forgiven. Your sins have been buried in the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered against you anymore. Don't fear the past. Don't fear the present. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Joshua 1, 9 says, Be not afraid, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Be bold, be strong, for the God of Israel is with you. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. What's so significant about that? The word shadow of death. The shadow of a lion cannot attack you. The shadow of a snake cannot bite you. The shadow of a sword cannot cut you. That verse means David speaking that Jesus Christ, his descendant, went to the cross and he annihilated death hell and the grave. Death is now just a shadow. When I leave this earth, I will walk through a harmless shadow. It will not hurt me. It will not delay me. It will not bring fear to my heart because the God of Israel is with me. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Hebrews 13, 6, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. Don't fear death. Jesus said, I am he that was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. As he lives, so shall we live. We are part of a kingdom that is never going to end. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Don't fear sickness, he's the great physician, and the healer is in the house today. Don't fear poverty, it's the Lord that gives you the power to get wealth. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight shall be in the law of God. His leaf shall not wither, say it with me, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You can help but read that and feel the power of heaven surging through your body. Square your shoulders, lift your head. You are somebody. You're a child of God. Do not fear other people. 
Don't fear your enemies. The Bible said, I will make your enemies to be at peace with you. God says that. I will make your enemies to be at peace with you. You have a Bible verse of that? Yes, I do. The Egyptians had an enemy, Pharaoh. God turned him to fish food in about five minutes and his whole army. Let me tell you, when God turns on your enemies, he destroys them utterly. Next week, this sermon continues. Don't worry about your fear. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Jesus is the one who gave us three cheers. Be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. Be of good cheer, be not afraid. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Paul said, rejoice in the Lord. And again I say rejoice. King David said, this is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Here's the point. If you woke up this morning and didn't see your face in the obituary column, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. It's a great day. Join us next week, this same time and channel, for the conclusion of this sermon. We pray that this message has blessed you. To own a copy of this sermon or give us a gift to a friend or family member, call 1-800-854-9899 or visit us online at jhm.org. You can also write John Hagee Ministries at P.O. Box 1400, San Antonio, Texas 78295. CDs are $7 and DVDs are $15. Does God really heal people today? Now the miraculous hand of God can be a vital part of your everyday life when you get the Power to Heal audio player. John Hagee reads over 100 inspiring scriptures that will bring you peace and hope. Then he said unto her, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. Call toll free or visit jhm.org to order the Power to Heal audio player and let the Master's Touch be right at your fingertips. Looking for the perfect gift to give this holiday season? Here's a great suggestion, a John Hagee Ministries gift card that allows them to choose from a wide variety of ministry resources. Visit jhm.org for more information and give the gift of the gospel. This telecast has been brought to you in its entirety by the faithful support of Salt Covenant Partners with this ministry. Thank you, partners, for your faithful support.